We make USAA insurance to help you save. Take advantage of discounts when you cover your home and your ride. Discover how we're helping members save at USAA.com slash bundle. USAA. Restrictions apply. The Shark Deck. Hello and welcome to Palace Intrigue. I am your host, Mark Francis. Does Harry only have six friends? Diana Elsa, writing for news.co.au, asks, Should we feel sorry for Prince Harry, Duke of Sussex, a man who these days seems largely cut off from his family, homeland, and good sense? On one hand, he was, by his own telling, dealt a bit of a bum deal, hard done by his family, by the British press, and by the quirk of fate that lumped him as a regal understudy. On the other hand, he has a whooping house, married the most glamorous woman he has ever dated, and supposedly millions of dollars flowing into his bank account, all while knowing he is never going to be sent to Hull to open a new sports shed or some such. But just when you thought it was safe to form an opinion either way on the Duke, the Mail on Sunday has popped up to reveal a truly sad revelation about Montecito's number one purchaser of high SPF sunscreen and Mad Magazine. While Harry might these days rub shoulders with the sorts of stars who earn millions selling shapewear now, Charlotte Griffith, the Mail's editor at large, has claimed that the 30-year-old does not seem to have that many British friends these days. In fact, around six, to be more precise. Maybe Harry just grew up and realised he was done having to drag himself off to shake hands in Cardiff after drinking nine Harvey Warbangers the night before. Maybe he wanted more out of life than knowing the cocktail menu at Annabelle's off by heart. Maybe the bloke just grew up. Still, over the years, there have been a number of reports and biographies that have detailed how the royals' friendships changed once he and Meghan became an item and then married. The Six Friends narrative, sure to stick around, tracks back to Charlotte Griffiths writing for the Daily Mail. Griffiths was referring to what we call the Phil Collins Live Aid plan for the coronation. Griffiths wrote, What Harry has been describing as an in-and-out job, the flyby visit will not allow him to catch up with that one-time inner core of UK-based friends, which now numbers only around six people. Meanwhile, PR guru Mark Borkowski has claimed Meghan decided to stay home, spare, damage the Sussex brand. She's kept her head down for some time. I suspect this is due to the noise that accompanied Spare. It created debate and a huge amount of coverage. I don't think it played well in America, especially with their fundraisers. The royal family refused to comment, so it became one-sided, whinging, and a visible story of his life that didn't resonate well. And they were both challenged by that because they are on a constant mission to raise money and generate coverage to help her brand. There is nothing for her to gain from disrupting the king's big day. She needs to stand back. In the PR game, it is choosing your battles, and the strategy will be to get past the coronation. But the Meghan and Harry story is way beyond the boundaries of British and Commonwealth. There will definitely be a relaunch by Meghan. It is impossible for them to stay quiet. Sex Pistols singer Johnny Lydon would seem to agree with the notion that Sussexes can't stay quiet. Lydon said, if you want to be normal and outside of the royal family, then just F off, just F off and shut up. I've had to make decisions like this in the past. I had to leave the pistols. I had to break up Public Image Limited a couple of times because the situation was unsustainable. And if that was their dilemma, then please go away. Right? We all love you for it, but they won't. And I've never been one for kiss and tell books. They're very, very spiteful to families and friends. When Queen Elizabeth passed, there was a re-release of the Sex Pistols' 77 song, God Save the Queen. Lydon said it was tasteless and disrespectful of the band to financially benefit from her passing. His representatives tweeted, John Lydon wishes to distance himself from any Sex Pistols activity which aims to cash in on Queen Elizabeth II's death. The musicians in the band and their management have approved a number of requests against John's wishes on the basis of the majority court ruling agreement. John wrote the lyrics to this historical song, and while he has never supported the monarchy, he feels that the family deserves some respect in this difficult time, as would be expected for any other person or family when someone close to them has died. Palacentric will be right back. Have you ever wondered what kind of wines the royals drink? I think Meghan probably likes to toss back a couple of Merlots, while Harry's a Pinot Grigio guy. Well, do you really know what kind of wine drinker you are? Are you always trying different wines in search of something you like, only to throw away half-empty bottles? I couldn't tell you how many glasses of red I've had and gone, but that's not me. Well, I want to introduce you to First Leaf. They're a subscription wine club that helps you finally find your perfect wine every time. Stay tuned. I'll tell you how to get 50% off at tryfirstleaf.com. 
You just go online and answer some quick questions about your likes and dislikes, and their experts will curate a selection of award-winning wines tailored to your taste, like refreshing rosés, fun sparkling wines, or spring-friendly reds. And they help you by letting you pick your favorite tastes and smells and then match that to the wine. Then you get to choose how often you receive your wine, and every selection is backed by First Leaf's 100% satisfaction guarantee. And because First Leaf cuts out the middleman and works directly with some of the world's foremost wine producers, you get quality wines at prices much lower than you'd pay at the store. I love sharing great wine with my friends and family, and I know you will too. So give First Leaf a try. Head over to tryfirstleaf.com slash palace to sign up and save 50% on your first six bottles plus free shipping. That's try, T-R-Y, first, F-I-R-S-T, leaf. L-E-A-F dot com slash palace to save 50% on your first six bottles plus free shipping. Try firstleaf.com slash palace. I'm Nina Hobson, ex-police detective from the UK. I've worked on every crime mentionable from murder to kidnap to stalking to fraud. When I left the force, I launched my own investigations firm that soon became a global operation. I'm also a single mother of two to two members of my team, my son Harrison and daughter Amy. Every week we'll be getting first-hand accounts from psychological experts, operatives, former criminals, actual victims of the crimes that we investigate, and of course, my very own flesh and blood. From Storic Media, you're listening to Codename Siren, a true crime podcast. Available on YouTube and all major podcast platforms. The Mirror took a look at what became of Queen Elizabeth's horses, now the property of King Charles, who has continued his mother's tradition of selling horses at the Tattersall's sales in Newmarket this week, with as many as 14 going to new owners, earning over £1 million. Per the Mirror, among the horses to be sold was Love Affairs, the Queen's last ever winner at Goodwood, just two days before she passed away. 2020 Royal Ascot winner Tactical reportedly fetched £150,000 at the sales, while Just Fine, who gave Charles his first Royal Silks winner, was sold for £300,000. There you have it. If you'd like to email us, our address is thepalaceintrigue at gmail.com. Please follow us on Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, YouTube, or your favourite podcast app of choice. I'm Mark Francis. My thanks to John McDermott. This is Palace Intrigue. Good times. I'm Melissa McKay, star of the new podcast, The Royals of Malibu. I play Ella, a sex worker just trying to survive when I get swept away to the wealth and the drama of Malibu. You know, you can like something without touching it. You've made the biggest mistake of your life, Ella Sinclair. You are a total psycho. Will Ella find a happily ever after ending or will these rich kids destroy her? Fall in love with The Royals of Malibu on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever you listen to podcasts.